Hello everybody, I'm Angela with Happy Little Stitch Shop and today I am with you to make Remix Block Number 3 by Lori Holt. This is from her So Simple Shapes Remix series that she's doing where she releases one block a month. It's an applique block and then we work through making it and have fun making these adorable blocks. This is block number three and kits are getting ready right now and shipping out right now. So you're right on time to grab a kit and join in the fun if you would like to join in. I'm gonna give you a quick peek of the first couple blocks that we did. This was block number one that Lori released and Happy Little Stitch Shop provided kits for people. And we always have the So Simple Shapes you need and all of the other applique supplies. But this is how block, block number one turned out. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with this one yet. I debated about making it into a pillow or maybe doing a wall hanging. And at one point I thought about doing a project bag. And so that led me to just hold on to it for right now until I decide what to do. So I'm holding on to that one. Here is block number two that Lori released. Um, super cute and I actually have a plan for this one so I made another block to go with block two but I'm not I'm still not done with my finished project yet so I hope to get done with that at some point soon and then um, be able to share it with you on our weekly live stream so those are the first two blocks and then the third block which is the one we're gonna work on today is this one so cute this one might be my favorite so far but maybe that's because it has a flag i don't know i seem to be drawn towards patriotic things um and so as we've been going through these blocks and providing kits for people uh, some customers have reached out and asked if i could do kind of a slow uh, tutorial to walk through the process of making the blocks so that's why i'm with you here today each month i will try to release a tutorial of just kind of slowly going through step by step and making the block with you. It's always more fun to go through it, you know, with someone and do it as a community. And so I'm hoping that you guys will join in and uh, make these beautiful blocks with me every month. The very first step, so here is step one, is go to Lori Holt's YouTube, YouTube channel. This is what I do every month when I make these blocks. Go to Lori Holt's YouTube channel and look for her block three remix video that she does. Watch through that. Make sure that you take notes because she'll do measurements. She'll talk about different measurements in there. So write, jot down some notes as you're, as you're watching it. Um, and then come back and we'll get started here. So I will link Lori's video link below in the description. So you just need to click on that link, go to her channel. It'll take you to her channel to watch that video. And then we'll come back here to do step two. So did you watch the video? She always has fun videos and lots of good information. Plus it's so much fun to see her sewing space. It's so happy and colorful. Um, <clears throat> okay, so now we're gonna go through some of the supplies and organizational stuff that's needed. The first thing that I wanna tell you guys is I have started a Lori Holt binder. <clears throat> okay, so in this binder, I have been printing off each block that Lori has done with the shapes that she uses and the fabrics that she uses. So this is block one, block two, block three. I, I just find it helpful to have the written information in front of me. So I've been doing that, just grabbing a screenshot and printing that for each block. Plus then I can look back to it if I need to make up extra kits or if I wanna make more of them in the future, then I have it in this handy dandy notebook to be able to um, reference back to it. The other thing that I think will be very helpful is Riley Blake Designs and Lori Holt released a So Simple Shapes cutting guide. I will put the link for this below in the description section, but this gives you bit by uh, so shape set by shape set the fabric cutting guidelines that you need in order to do those shapes. So it's beautiful, it's colorful, it's happy, but it's also very helpful uh, when we're pulling shapes and you need to know what size fabric or interfacing um, to cut. Oops, and then I have some other stuff in here for so longs that we're doing in the future, like the Be Happy So Long uh, that we're gonna do next year in March. 
So I will put the link below for the So Simple Shapes cutting guide and you can um, get, a, get a binder and print that off if that would be helpful to you so that you will have all that information in one place. Then we are gonna talk about the shapes that we need in order to make this block number three. So first up, she is using two of her So Simple Shapes sets to make this block, block number three. She's using Autumn Love and Prim. So you're gonna need the Autumn Love So Simple Shape set and you're gonna need the Prim So Simple Shape set. Now when you go to order your kit at happylittlestitchshop.com, there's a drop down box so that you can choose if you want fabric only, if you want fabric and the Prim So Simple Shape set, if you want the fabric and just the Autumn Love So Simple Shape set, or if you need fabric, Autumn Love, and Prim So Simple Shape sets. So you can get them any way that you need them if you already have some of the sets and you don't need them all. We have all the options covered for you. So from the Autumn Love collection, you will need shape F2. Can you see that? And you will need shape F23. You will need F15. You will need F16. You will need F34. That's a big one. And then from the Prim So Simple Shape set, you can pull out K15, K29, K43, K56, and K11 is the last one. And then of course you're gonna need your kit of fabric and then grab your applique glue, grab your applique pins. Um, it's helpful to have your seam roller by Lori Holt, a scissors. I have everything in my Lori Holt tin mug. You need your point to point turner. You need your sew in interfacing by Lori Holt. Um, a pencil, you know, all of those applique supplies that you're gonna need, rulers, all of that kind of stuff. So grab all of your fabric, all of your supplies, um, your so simple shapes that you need, and then we'll meet you back here to jump into um, drawing out those shapes. Okay, so now we are ready to grab your so simple shapes that we've picked out that are being used for block three, and we're gonna trace each of those onto Lori's sew in interfacing. So, um, grab your pencil or your friction pen, whatever you decide to use. This is where it would be helpful to reference the Sew so Simple Shapes cutting guide, and you can cut your interfacing according to that cutting guide, according to the shapes that you have. So if you are kind of a, have everything just so, and you want to plan all of that out ahead of time and, and do that and take the time to do that, that's what that Sew so Simple Shapes cutting guide is for. So look through that, that cutting guide, find the shapes that you're using for this block, and go ahead and cut out your interfacing according to the sizes and the dimensions that are in that cutting guide. For me, I don't take the time to do that. I usually just grab some interfacing and I just start tracing any way that I can. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. So the first uh, shape that I have here is F34. And what I do is I just, you know, you're gonna wanna leave you know, a good, a, an okay amount around the outside. I don't want to put it way over to the edge because that's not going to give me enough. So I just kind of put it in the middle and go around and trace the whole thing on to your, your sew-in interfacing. And you're gonna do this with all of, you're gonna do that with all of the So Simple Shapes that we're using for block three. So you can just grab your interfacing, grab all your shapes and go through and trace all of your shapes onto the interfacing now. And then we'll come back and we'll move on to the next step. 
Okay, so before you trace all of your shapes, there are two shapes that Lori mentions in her video that are worth noting as we're going through and doing the tracing. So it's important to watch Lori's video. Please make sure you take a peek at it. Um, the first one is the croc shape. So let's look down at our interfacing here. I just got done tracing F34, but Lori made the neck of this just a little bit shorter. She measured down a half an inch. So what I did is I took my ruler and I measured down from the top a half of an inch and I just uh, drew a line here. So when I go through and I sew that, I won't be doing this part at all. I'll be just be sewing along this bottom line. And then also for shape K29, she didn't use the entire shape for this one. She made her flag a little bit uh, shorter uh, by cutting it off here. So I traced all the way around the outside. I drew a couple little lines right at this line where I'm gonna cut it shorter. And now I'm just gonna make a straight line along here between the two. So then that'll be my flag uh, for the red gingham to, to sew that. So those are a couple shapes that are gonna be done a little bit differently than just tracing them as they are. You need to make a couple adjustments to those. I think that the rest of them, you're just gonna go ahead and trace them onto your interfacing as is, and uh, then we'll come back and we'll do the next step. Okay, another quick note about tracing these shapes. There are three shapes that you're gonna need to trace multiples of. So don't forget for K56, you'll need to trace five of these onto your sew-in interfacing, because we're making five little flowers with this. For K11, you'll need to trace five of these onto your sew-in interfacing because these are the centers for those five flowers. And then for K43, you will need to trace four of these. It looks like three because there are three leaves, but this shape is actually used with the red dot for the center of the tulip-shaped flower. So trace four of four, or K43. So don't forget to trace those multiples onto your sew-in interfacing and then we'll get started with some pretty fabrics. Okay, so I have gone through and I have traced all of my shapes onto my interfacing. So I have all of my shapes traced out and now I am ready to match up my shapes with the fabric that we're using for those shapes. Again, this is a great place to, to utilize that Sew sh Simple Shapes uh, cutting guide. Just like you have the dimensions that you would cut your interfacing, you can reference that guide for each shape and cut your fabric to those same dimensions that you would cut your interfacing to. And then you would have all of your fabric and interfacing cut out and ready to go. I am doing this as I'm going, so I'm not really cutting my fabric ahead of time. So if we wanna take a peek, I'm gonna line up. I'm working with the crock first. The crock is gonna go on this B cross stitch uh, pewter fabric. So I'm just gonna line this up and then I'm gonna cut a little bit around the outside and I'm gonna do that with all of my shapes. So I'm gonna line up like all of these circles are going to go on the red. You can reference the picture to know what everything goes with. These all go on the yellow. Three of these will go on the green for the leaves and one will go on the red. This is for your red gingham, that's for your flag. This is for the yellow flower. This is for the blue um, part of the flag. This is for the red tulip. This is the brown for the center of the yellow flower. And then this is blue for the star. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna pull all my fabric, match it up with all of my shapes, cut my fabric to uh, fit the shape size and get it ready to sew together. So go ahead and match your fabrics and your shapes up. Um, cut your fabric to, to go with your Sew Simple shapes and then we'll come back and talk about sewing next. Hey guys, so I have all of my fabric cut and paired up with the Sew Simple shapes that it's gonna go with and so now they are ready to be sewn. So let's take a peek at what we have. My nice little pile of fabric. So I have all of these little shapes on the yellow gingham. So those are all ready to be sewn. 
I have all of my little circles for the center of those flowers on my red uh, circles. So those are ready to be sewn. I have three of the leaves on the green, so those are ready. Oh, and I have one of the leaves on the red circle. We have one circle on brown for the center of the sunflower. We have the tulip on the jazzberry. We have the star on the blue. We have the sunflower on the bee cross stitch butterscotch. We have the flag on the gingham. That's the corner of the flag on the blue. And then our uh, crock on the pewter be cross stitch. So I'm gonna go take these to my sewing machine and I'm gonna sew all of these down. And all you're gonna do is just follow along the line and sew along those lines um, all of these shapes onto the fabric. And remember, when I talked in my live stream, some of these fabrics, some of these things might, might require a lot of pivoting. So think of me when you're sewing and hear me in your head saying, pivot! pivot just like Ross picture Angela Ross in your head telling you to pivot as you go around all of these little oh it might I could see it better if I had it right side up all of these little um, zigzags so there could be a lot of pivoting involved here not too much because we have some rectangles and squares so those are gonna be pretty straightforward but take your time with your sewing just go through and sew all of the shapes onto the fabric and then we'll come back and next we'll talk about um, clipping the back and turning them out and shaping our shapes. That's what we'll talk about next. So have fun sewing. Hello everyone, so how did your sewing go? Did you get all of your interfacing sewed onto your fabric and did you pivot a lot? I was constantly saying in my head, okay, pivot, pivot, pivot to try to make those corners nice and smooth and uh, the points nice and smooth. So hopefully it went well for everybody. I now have all of my interfacing sewn onto my pieces, my shapes. And so now we are ready to trim and to snip the back and then turn it out. So I'm gonna grab a shape, I'm grabbing my star. And the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna trim about a quarter of an inch away from where you sewed. Uh, the line that you sewed on. It doesn't have to be perfect, just kind of do a loose cutout around that area. And then remember, if you watch Lori's video, I'm sure that you noticed, she talks about doing little snips on the areas that go inward. Um, so this star is a perfect example. Here's the star. And we have this part that goes in and then back out. And so we're gonna wanna do little snips in all of those areas that angle inward and that helps it to uh, hold a better shape when you turn it out. Sometimes it, it just doesn't give enough when you turn it right side out and you try to shape that area. So we're just gonna do a little snip. Be very careful not to snip the sewing that you just did. So I don't know if you can see this, but don't go in there too far. You don't want to snip. You don't want to snip that line that you sewed. Otherwise you'd have a big hole in your shape and that is not good. So after you have it trimmed and if you have any areas that go inward, you want to snip those. And once that's done, then you want to pull it apart, pull your interfacing apart from your fabric and you're going to cut a little snip in the interfacing so that you can do a little X in the back. By the way, part of the reason that I'm doing these videos is because I am a big fan of this applique process. You don't have any raw edges that are gonna fray. All of your edges are turned inward. This is an applique process that Lori came up with. She designed it and designed all of these products to go with this process that she developed. Um, and as soon as I saw it, I was like, yes, that is so smart. And uh, you don't have to deal with any sticky products like fusible products, um, getting goop all over your iron. I don't know how many times that happened to me. And you don't have to worry about 
uh, those edges fraying. All of the edges are turned in. It's just so smart. It's such a smart um, method. Everything is turned in. Okay, so I'm sorry. I'm busy dreaming in um, the genius of, of Lori Holt's applique process. And I'm forgetting to tell you now what I'm doing. So after you snip the back, then you turn it so that the fabric's out, grab your point to point turner, and now you're gonna gently push all of these. You're gonna shape this shape so that it looks like the shape it is intended to be. So just be very gentle so you don't poke a hole through uh, the end. Get all your points looking you know, kind of like points and uh, get them to the point where you are happy with how they look. Just be very gentle. Okay, there I have my star. This will look better once I press it. But first I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna shape all of these pieces. Uh, uh, be careful when you turn your circles. I did a few pieces already. Just, you know, there might be some flat spots on your circles if you sew anything like I do. And uh, so I really try to work those out and I try really hard as I'm going around not to let this point get stuck into one of those, like right here, there's a little bit of a point. So as you go around, the point of your point to point turner is kind of automatically drawn to those areas that are already creating those flat spots. So just try to really smooth those out as best you can so that your circle doesn't have any flat spots. So now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna turn the rest of these out. I'm gonna cut all of these and turn them out um, and then shape them, trim them and shape them. I'm gonna get all my shapes ready and then I'm gonna press them. So once you have all of your shapes turned out, they're shaped the way you want them to be, take your iron and give them a quick press so that they're nice and flat. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna uh, work on our bias tape. Uh, we're gonna go through that process and make um, the two stripes that go across the crock and our flagpole and our flower stems. So we're gonna go through that process so that we have all of the pieces ready to bring our picture together. And then we're gonna start getting our background out and piecing, placing all of the pieces on the background. So our picture is slowly coming together, you guys. This is so much fun. So have fun turning out your shapes and we'll be back to do some bias, um, bias tape in just a little bit. Okay, we're ready to move on to the next step of preparing our bias tape. And so first, let me show you what I have cooking over here underneath my heavy jar of mini charms. Uh, I went ahead and I put together some of the pieces that go together, I guess. So the, the blue square that goes onto the red gingham, all of the pieces, the centers on all the flowers, I went ahead and I glued those down ahead of time and I just had them sitting here kind of drying and flattening out underneath my heavy jar while I've been working on some other stuff. So all of that I got done, put those together, glued them. They've been drying and flattening over there. Now we're gonna talk about bias tape. We have one, two, three, four, five bias tapes that we need to make for this block. And let's look at, at what they are and I can explain it to you. Um, we need two of the green circle dot for the stems for the flowers. These are gonna use the quarter inch bias tape maker. So you need to cut these both at 5 eighths of an inch. And I cut them on the bias because those um, stems are gonna curve a little bit. So Lori went through how to cut on the bias in uh, one of her previous videos. So we'll, I'll link that below so that you can take a peek at that. But you'll just take your 10 inch square and you'll cut it in half diagonally in order to have this stretch and bend to your fabric. Then we need the uh, pewter ticking uh, for the flagpole. This is also going to be using the quarter inch bias tape maker. And so this is gonna be cut at 5 eighths of an inch. And I just did that, um, the length of the 10 inch square. So this is 10 inches by 5 eighths of an inch. 
This is one of the stripes that goes on the crock. This is also going to be a quarter inch bias um, tape. And so I cut this at 5 eighths of an inch by 10 inches. And then this one is the thicker stripe on the crock. And this one is gonna be a half inch. So this is the bias tape maker that you need to make that. And this one gets cut at one inch. So this is one inch by 10 inches. And really quick, <clears throat> Let me tell you, uh, remember that So Simple Shape cutting guide that I showed you at the beginning of the video? One of my favorite things about this guide and the thing that I think is most helpful for me because I can never remember what width to cut these fabrics when I run them through the bias tape makers. The last page of the guide has the cutting guide for strips for bias tape makers. So it tells you if you're going to use a quarter inch bias tape, this is how much to cut it, how wide to cut it. If you're gonna use half an inch, an inch, three eighths of an inch, it gives you all of the dimensions of what you need to cut your fabric right in this guide. So that is super helpful. So it's nice to have that handy in your binder. Um, so next, we're gonna take all of these strips of fabric and we're gonna take our bias makers, bias tape makers, over to the ironing area and I'll show you how to run through uh, making one of those quick. Okay guys, so I'm at the ironing space and I have one of my strips here. First thing, as you've seen from Lori's videos that she recommends is just spraying it a bit with some starch or a mixture of water and starch. You also should have clipped one of the ends of your uh, cloth so that it has a point so that it's easier to run through here. I find it kind of hard to run it through after I wet it. And then it's always nice to have a sharp thing to kind of help pull it through and get it started. Once you have it started, then you're going to take your iron. And I also find it hard to... There we go. You're gonna take your iron and you're gonna pull this through and just iron it along as you go. For this, I'm kind of ironing at a curve because this is gonna be one of the stems for the flowers. And again, you're just gonna iron it until it's dry. Keep pulling and ironing. I'm gonna run off of my ironing board. And just keep going until you get it all through the bias tape maker and then you have your quarter inch stem for one of your flowers. That's it. So I'm going to do this to the rest of my bias tapes and then I will meet you back at the table to start putting our picture together. So all of my bias tapes are made and ready to go. The first thing we're gonna focus on putting together is the crock. We'll get all of the pieces put on that, so then we just have to piece one crock onto everything else. So let's take a peek at the bias tapes that we have for the crock. So number one, I've already added the star, and the star goes up one inch from the bottom of the crock. So I just measured up one inch from the bottom, and that's right where the star is. And then I was really focused on trying to make this point in the center of the whole thing. So this entire thing measures about five and a half inches. So the center of this tip should be at about two and three fourths inches. So that's how I figured it out. So an inch up from the bottom, two and three fourths inches in from the sides for this point right here to be in the center. So my star is glued down, that's already on there. And now we have these two stripes to add. The first one that goes on is the thicker one that we made. And this goes a quarter of an inch above the tip of the star. And I am waiting for smaller rulers to come into the shop. I've ordered a bunch of Lori Holt rulers that will be coming into the shop hopefully soon. Some of them are back ordered, so I'm waiting for them. But I'm very anxious to get them because those smaller rulers are perfect for things just like this. 
So this is where this first one is gonna go. And before I do anything else, I'm gonna just put a dab of glue under there. Oh, look at that. Sometimes that happens, it's nothing to worry about. Or the glue kind of comes out the side a little bit. Or, I mean, I've never been worried about it. Maybe I should be, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna trim these off just a tish so I don't have a lot to bend over the back. I'm gonna trim those. Okay, and so then this, we're gonna glue around to the back. So we're gonna put a dot of glue there, and a dot of glue there. And these should actually be pressed, which you might want to do that prior to gluing. That would have been a good idea. So we're gonna take a break. I'm gonna go press this quick and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna add the second one. Okay guys, so I pinned down my, or I pinned them, I ironed my stripes onto my crock. So let's take a peek at it. I just pressed along the edge here to give them a good crease so that they would bend nicely around the crock. So again, this thicker stripe, the first one here is a quarter of an inch above the point of the star. The second stripe is a quarter of an inch above the first stripe. So then you can glue all of those down, wrap it around the back, glue it around the back, and we're all set and good to go. Now we're ready to put the crock on our background here. I've done a little bit of work already, as you can see, just kind of placing and making sure things are right. So we want to have the crock placed one and a quarter inches up from the bottom. So I'm gonna line my ruler up at one and a quarter inches and I'm gonna make sure this crock is on here, right where my ruler is. And then the other thing that I'm paying attention to is I wanna be sure that this, tip, this point to the star lines up with our center of our so I'm lining up down here because I want to have, I'm, you know, just squaring it up in two places. So this lines up with the center. This is pretty close. I feel like it has to go just a tish ever so slightly to my left. So again, I'm gonna line this up, line it up at the bottom. Well, now it's really off. I'm gonna move it again. I should have just left it alone. There. Okay, so now this is right where I want it. So now I'm going to put some pins in here so I don't accidentally move it. I'm gonna put some pins in here until I glue it down. Okay. All of these other pieces, the blue pieces on my crock are already glued down. And I already put my flagpole to the right of my center line. So I pressed my background. First of all, when you get your kit, you're gonna have a fat quarter of your background in your kit. You're gonna need to cut that to 14 by 18. So I've already cut my background, I've pressed it, I've folded it in half and I've pressed a center crease, the length wise of the cloth, so that I have a center point to kind of line everything else up with. So my flag pole is to the right of my center point. I've added my flag. Your, the top of your flag is 15 and a half inches from the bottom of your crock. So at first I made a mistake and I was going 15 and a half inches up from the bottom of my cloth my background cloth and my, everything was very crowded up here and scrunched together. I didn't have enough space. So make sure that you go 15 and a half inches up from the bottom of the crock. So if I line that up 15 and a half, the top of my flag is right at that 15 and a half inch mark. So now everything is, is lined up correctly. Now we can add all of the other stuff. 
So I was kind of messing around with this flower to make sure that it was fitting right. I don't know what, oh, that's the, so I might just want to trim that just a tish. my stems to have kind of a nice curve to them. So I think that looks nice. So I'm gonna put a couple pins in this till I can glue it down. And now we're gonna focus on this one. <clears throat> she, Lori said that she placed it half of an inch down from the top of the flag and a half of an inch over. So I don't have my small Lori rulers yet. I have ordered them to have them in the shop. They would be so much easier than uh, doing this. And it can go up. So I'm about right about there. So pretty soon I'm gonna have some cute cut uh, rulers in the shop. I feel like this needs to go over a little bit. She had both of these stems about a quarter of an inch away from the flagpole. So I'm just eyeballing these instead of going, you know, crazy with measuring. So I'm gonna put that there and then again I want my stem to kind of have a nice curve I think that looks good so I'm gonna put some pins in here to hold these in place until I can uh, glue these down and now I'm just kind of going by the picture from the sample that Lori made when I place all of these things. So this one kind of overlaps the flagpole. This one is kind of up under here, pretty close to the sunflower. And then this one is kind of hanging out over here and you can place these however you want you know tilt them further out tilt them further in and then we get to add these fun little flowers here she has one under here and these can be kind of turned in whatever direction you want I kind of like mine to go not necessarily straight on. <gasps> Look at that! Look at the picture we have made. So let me turn this around so you guys can see it. So if you're happy with how things are lined up, then you know make sure you pin everything down to hold it in place. And then uh, you can go ahead and go through and start gluing everything. I'm just gonna stick some pins quick into these little guys. And then I usually, you know, put put the glue on and then put some put a ruler over it and put something heavy on top of it to kind of flatten it all out and help and secure it all into place. But this is this is what it's gonna look like. Isn't it so cute? I love this month's design. And I love doing this remix. I am so happy that Lori decided to do this. I'm so happy that we are providing kits and we have joined in and we're making these beautiful blocks every month. I love doing applique and I'm a huge fan of Lori's method. And so I love sharing that with you guys. And I hope that this tutorial helped and um, hopefully will, you know, inspire you to join in and make these things with us. Oh, and I also grabbed Lori had suggested a finishing option, which I thought was so cute. And so I have decided to do a finish just like that. So this will give you an idea of what it will look like framed once it's all done.
I think it is so cute. So I went to Hobby Lobby and I snagged this barn wood frame. I, of course it does not have a sticker on it, but in Lori's video, she shows this frame and she gives you the SKU. So if you're interested in it, she has all that information in her video. So thank you so much, you guys, for joining me today. I hope this was helpful to you. I hope that you are gonna jump in and do this remix and make these beautiful blocks each month with us. We do have a remix club at happylittlestitchshop.com. You can join and go to happylittlestitchshop.com and search for So Simple Shapes Remix and you can join our club. By joining our club, you will be guaranteed to get a kit every month. So it's a great way to secure your kit and make sure that you're not gonna miss out on, on getting a kit or them running out, us running out of them and not having them in stock. So go to happylittlestitchshop.com and join our So Simple Shape Remix Club. And please go to happylittlestitchshop.com and check out all of our quilting and cross stitch supplies. And be sure to subscribe to our Happy Little Stitch Shop YouTube channel. Please give us a thumbs up if you liked what you saw here today and if it was helpful to you, please comment below and let us know uh, if you liked it and if you're enjoying our YouTube channel. And please follow us on Instagram. You can follow Happy Little Stitch Shop and you can follow us on Facebook as well. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Happy stitching and have a good night, everybody.